Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Last time we made the handles and this time we're gonna make the rest of this off. So let's dive in and have a bit of fun. So we got a handle, now we need to put a plate into that. So let's cut a slot, but I want the slot to be this thickness, not the thickness of the set on the teeth. That's right, we are making three back saws, and last time we made the handles for them, and now we're gonna be putting in all the hardware. So the plates I have actually purchased uh, from Floor Up Tools, and then also from Blackburn Toolworks. I'll leave links to all of them down below, uh, as well as all the hardware for this. Yeah, it's kind of nice with the saw, you can grab a piece of wood, but for all the rest of it, yeah, you could make it yourself, but we're going to uh, um, use what's already been made. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a center line down this. So you can see it's actually ever so slightly thicker at the top. Marking from both sides allows you to see any variance. And I'm using a saw that has a slightly thinner kerf than what I need, um, so that this will actually match the kerf of the plate, uh, because the kerf of the saw is wider than the plate of the saw, and therefore you need to find a saw with the right kerf to match the plate you're sticking into it. And I want it to fit down in and be pretty snug. And so this needs to slide down in and fit. The design from Blackburn Toolworks actually shows how it should be cut out inside of the handle to make it fit all the way back in. Next, we need to make the slot for the back to fit in because the handle holds both the back and the plate. And so we can set the back on there and mark out how wide it is, how deep it's going to come down, and cut around this. So with that in place, we can bring in a chisel. And I want this chisel to be smaller than it needs to be because I'm going to work up to these lines. I want to have a nice, tight fit on here. And that means stay away from the lines as long as possible chip in from the edge and then come in and peel out. So it's kind of like making a half lap joint, um, but in this case, a very small one and a very delicate one because at this point, if you go in and make the joinery, then you're gonna mess up everything you've done so far. We need to define all the lines very nicely and just light, light taps, making sure we're not moving the lines, making sure we're not splitting off anything we want. Then once we have it cut in, we can come in from the end and then peel out the little pieces. And we're gonna take this down layer by layer. And so I'm gonna peel out a little bit, then I'm gonna come in and define that outside line and then peel out a little more, come in, define the line, peel out a little more, back and forth until we get a nice tight fit all the way down to the depth that I want. And this one I ended up actually chipping out just a little bit on there. Oh well, this particular handle is mine. Uh, the other two are being given away to uh, Alex Adams. And uh, I hope he likes them. <laughs> Once we get that all in place, we can see, you know, does the back actually fit in between the slot as well as fitting the plate into the slot. Um, I'm going to be trying it back and forth several times, making sure it's exactly where I want it, making sure it's down to the depth I want. Um, and this one has a rounded back, so I want it to sit down a little bit more. Now, at this point, we need to take the back off, and that can actually be a bit tricky, uh, especially if you have a really good folded back like these ones. Uh, the backs came from Floor Up Tools, and he made those for me and did an amazing job on them. To fit the plate into the handle, we need to cut a bit of an angle on here. And the nice thing with spring steel is you can work it pretty well. I'm gonna come in with some tin snips and this is going to leave a little bit of a rough edge, but that's something you can fix very easily with a file. And so we're gonna take the burrs off of it and make sure we get a good clean fit on here. And this will all slide then inside the handle because uh, we don't want it poking out into the middle. Uh, also, he had a rounded end on this one and I wanted to make it flat and then round it the other direction. Um, just to fit it a slightly different style. Um, different people will create different methods to show uh, different styles on here. Now, in this one, I'm tapping the back end um, on the plate, and I probably should flip it around and then use a soft hammer on the back uh, rather than using a metal hammer on the, the plate. Um, just don't want to damage it, but I'm going to be cutting all the teeth in this. I'm actually going to be taking a little bit of material off, so it's okay right now. Next, we need to fit it into the handle, make sure everything's clamped in place, and then drill the holes. We're going to drill through the wood with a regular twist bit, and then I'm going to come in with this uh, metal bit that will actually allow me to cut through the brass and the spring steel much, much easier. Uh, it is a, a center bit that will um, actually make the holes fit. Once we get through the other side, then we go back to a twist bit to go through the wood. And we need all three of these holes, which all the holes were laid out in the pattern uh, from Blackburn Toolworks. The middle one is getting the medallion, and then the other two are just getting the normal split nuts. And I'll have uh, links to those as well. This particular one is mine, and so I'm kind of experimenting and playing on this one, and then the other two will be ones that I take a little more time on and, and careful with. You can see how these fit in. I haven't cut the recesses yet. Normally you'd want to cut the recesses first and then drill through, 
um, but I wanted to um, experiment with a couple different things. I want to make sure the fit is nice and tight. One of the things I like about the hardware here is they have the tapered heads uh, so that they, they kind of suck down into the hole. So I'm doing some tests in a block of wood to make sure I get the fit I want. I want them to fit in and kind of wedge into place and give me a nice, tight, hard fit. I also need to have a depth mark on there so I know how far they need to go in. So with the hole in place, we can come in and very, very neatly clean this out to exactly the right width and exactly the right depth. And I'm going to go back and forth and test it. And if you go a little bit too deep, that's okay. You can put a spacer in there um, or a, a lock nut to hold it in. And that is what I'm really looking for. Nice and shiny. And then on the other side, uh, the nut has a, a slightly larger hole that the, head, the, uh, the, the, the threaded part has to fit into. And then you need the larger hole. So there's actually two steps for that on the other side. So we had to take a little bit of time making sure I found the right one for both of them. Um, and if I remember correctly, it was a, a quarter inch that I needed to countersink in a little ways uh, for the threaded portion to fit into. And then I could come back with the larger um, half inch to then create the hole for the head to fit into. The medallion is three quarter inch, and the ones you get from Blackburn Tools actually have a, a socket in you can fill into. You can see here the blank socket on here. Um, I actually went to a trophy shop and they cut a small disc that then fit into there. So there's a brass recess cut into it so you can make your own design and put it in there. Then you can tighten these all down in and uh, go to town. This is actually a split nut wrench from Black, uh, Blackburn Toolworks. Uh, you can see this time the screws are actually sticking out. They are shipped a little longer than they need to be, and that's okay. We're going to come back in and trim them off a little later. Um, also, the brass back on this is a little long, so, so we one, can uh, trim that off. But now let's move on to the teeth, and this is where the noisy and the annoying part. And I, I tried a bunch of different methods, and I actually did a video on showing this with the split method um, of separating these. And I really like this. It works very, very well. Um, I have since found a better method. Um, but I'll leave a link to that down below. I want to show this, though, because it's what I'm, what I'm using. Basically, we're taking the two plates, separating them, one of them upside down, one of them right side up, and that way the one that's upside down will fit into the last slot, making sure you have um, even spacing between all of the teeth. It is very important that the spacing between the teeth is exact, and I like to come in and mark out where all the teeth are with a hacksaw. And so I got these little clamps that actually go in and hold this one down pretty well. Uh, I, I kind of like this method. It, it works really well, and it also gives you a very accurate depth of cut, uh, which the other method doesn't. Um, but this one, um, yeah, uh, th there's pros and cons to both. But I think I prefer the other method. And so if you want to see that, links down in the description. I also have lots of other links on how to sharpen the teeth, how to actually cut the teeth, um, and more things like that. So if you want to see more things than what is actually in this video, there's a lot more information down there. So we can lock this all into the hacksaw. And then we're going to experiment with this plate to play around with it. Uh, and it's always best to do experiments. I have a lot of old saws that really aren't worth keeping, and so those end up turning into scratch stocks or card scrapers, and this one gives me a chance to experiment with cutting new teeth into it. You can see how the spacing is right about there. And I want to cut them all in about a sixteenth of an inch. I don't want very deep, but I want them to be about that. You can change the spacing by then changing the spacer in between. And so we can just continue down along the saw to cut in all of these nicks, and that lets you know where you can put the teeth in. Once you have all those teeth in place, then you can come in with the saw filing file, and just like sharpening teeth, uh, except for a little more work taking them down to depth. And I'm going to come in and cut all the teeth, and then I'm going to come back through and joint them all, and then make one more pass of actually sharpening them. Then I'm going to come in and set them all, and then I'm going to come back in one more time and sharpen them all again. Um, just to make sure that they are exactly where I want them to be. I want nice, clean teeth on here. On mine, I'm making it into a tenon saw. Um, on the, the other two for Alex, I'm going to make those into a tenon saw and a sash saw, so a matching pair on those. The brass has the oxidation on there, so I'm going to come in and sand that off with some 400 grit and leave that, that brushed look on there. So for this one, uh, this is actually not a folded back. This is a, a cut back from Blackburn Toolworks. Um, and I need to epoxy this one in place rather than pinching it down in. And then we can drive in all the nuts, make sure we have a good tight fit in it. <laughs> this one, oh, it went out of alignment, so I had to move things around on there to make sure it actually fit down in. Uh, and then work things back and forth until it's right where I want it to be. Then we can flip it over and put the nuts on the other side. Um, again, this one is my experimental one, so the, the nuts are a little bit scratched up on this, but I'll be coming back and cleaning them off. And then we can tighten them all down with this beautiful driver. Um, if you're having problems with split nuts, this is definitely the way to go. So once we get this in place, 
you'll remember how the bolts were a little bit long, and so this is the time where I can fix those. So I'm going to put the nuts back in and find out how much do I need to take off, and it's a little bit less than an eighth of an inch. And so we can put them in and then take them off. And I'm going to put one of the nuts onto the thread and use it as a sacrificial nut so that I can keep filing it off until I get down to the face of the nut. And this actually goes pretty quickly with the file. Then we can put them back in and work them out and find out how many uh, washers or spacers do we need to make them flush. You can see how one of them is down a little bit too low. And that's how, um, a moment that I can back it out, put in an extra lock washer, uh, which Blackburn Toolworks does offer those. So now it's a saw, uh, but we want to do a little bit more work on this. Uh, the teeth aren't set and they don't have the final sharpening on there. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, set the teeth. I like to wait until it's all together. It makes it a little bit easier to hold on than just having the plate. And so you can come in with a saw set and one by one go through the teeth. And this is a very, very tedious step and you want to make sure you do this very carefully. If you take too, if you go too fast on this, you will run into problems. Um, and everyone has their own favorite saw set. Uh, this is my favorite, and there are lots of different ones out there. Uh, there are hundreds and hundreds of different types of saw sets, and I may end up doing a video here soon about how to set a saw, because you can do it with something easier, uh, but in this case, I want to do that. Now, I actually like to sharpen the teeth after they've been set. I usually set the teeth every uh, three or four sharpenings. I don't do them every time. So now that it has been set, I can come back through and do the final sharpening and clean them off. A little bit of a sharpie on there allows you to know exactly what you've seen, what you've done, and you can bring them back down to that jointed line. And now, after the sharpening, we can finally Drive test it. TV. This is where things get fun. Now let's take it for a test drive and see what we get, because they're never perfect right off the bat. Sometimes you have to do a little bit of tweaking, and most of the time you just have to address the set on them. And then this one is actually veering ever so slightly to the right. You can see how it's starting to cross the line now, and it's almost always on the other, almost yeah, onto the other side of the line. So that means we need to take off a little bit of set on the right side of the saw. So you set it flat on the table, and then you run a coarse stone just over at a one or two strokes. And that just takes off a little bit of set on that side, and now it'll track perfectly good and true. And if you want to see more on that, I have a whole video on how to stone a saw. And now you can see it runs right down that line really happy. Yeah, I like where that's at. And then if you really want to test it, you just put a whole bunch of curves right next to each other and you see how close you can get them to each other. And eventually you can actually make a curve that is separated by less than the thickness of the curve. And that's always fun. So yeah, um, they actually work out yeah, really well. See, very, fun. very happy with how the saw good. came out and uh, course, really pleased with how it fits the saw. And I'm going to go ahead and christen it with a good coat of paste wax and let it be ready for the next one. You can see all of them. Um, I had a lot of fun making mine to kind of learn what I'm doing and then pass it on for Alex's saws. So, yeah, um, really like how these came out. Incredibly happy. And I might have to make some more in the future. We'll see. Now, there you have it. I am in love with this. I, I love the, how they came out and they fit my hand exactly. I'm just making your own saw is something that is, isn't terribly difficult. It's just time consuming. There are a lot of steps that go into making a good back saw. And once you have it, it feels fantastic. And especially making three of them, I got to learn things on this one, and then I made those ones better. And these two really came out just mm, top notch. So I hope Alex likes them. You will definitely be seeing me using this one a lot more as I've been wanting to upgrade from my Veritas tenon saw for a while. And finally, I can do it in style. So I hope you like this. If you have any questions or thoughts, things I could have done better, things I should learn, let me know those down in the comments below. I do read through all of them and I learn a lot of things from you. So thank you for that. that does mean a lot. On top of that, anytime you do put a comment down below or you hit the like, share, subscribe, you're actually helping out the channel. You are helping us grow, you're helping us improve and become better. Thank you. It means more than I can say, not just from the comments that I get to learn from, but also helping the algorithm and helping us to grow. So if you want to find out more about that, do that. Also, you can take it one step farther and join one of these names over here from Patreon. And the top one on the list is Alex Adams. He's the one who got these. And uh, for becoming the man, I actually make one tool uh, for him. And this time we actually decided to make two tools. We made a set. So I hope you like it. And I'm looking forward to seeing what you make with them in the future. If you do want to help out the channel and become a patron, there's links to that down in the description below. Or you can become a member here on YouTube and click that little join button. We have special perks for both, and I think they'll do it for now. Until next time, have a wonderful day. Anytime I think about a back saw, it reminds me of the movie Back to the Future. And that makes me wonder, why would it be called a back saw? Shouldn't it be called a back scene? <laughs>